Harry, give me the phone, please. Betty, uh, get me George Evans right away. He's got his crew at the new building. George. Hmm? Evans. No, Mr. Spencer, sure didn't. Mansion house? How can that be? Well, I'll go right down and check it and call you back. and let me see your ID. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. That's where she kissed me. I said, I'm sorry, we don't serve minors. She said, I love you. That's not minor. Now, there are tears in her eyes, and that's when she went for her father. And she's only 15? He took me aside. He said, young man, I understand the life of a social director during the season here at Poland Springs can be fraught with all types of unique problems, of which Binky is probably the most unique. Binky. That's his daughter's name, the one who's chasing me. He said, don't discourage her. She needs a lesson, not an explanation. I said, sir, sir, your daughter is only a child. You ought to be ashamed. He said, shame is a judgmental word. See, he's an analyst. Anyway, he said, I trust you, Styles. You'll walk a careful line, won't you? He had to leave it then, because Binky came rushing in and kissed me right in front of him. And Bye. He just stood there and smiled. Leo, put Hershey in number one stall. Yes, ma'am. We were all wondering when the horses would arrive. My boys love to ride. I can guarantee you a waiting list of customers. Your boys? You don't look old enough. Sixty of them. Count them, sixty. I'm next door at the caddy camp. Summer counselor. Link case. Whoever did it broke the lock and fired up furnace number two. First time in 30 years. Don't make no sense at all. Yes, sir. We'll put a new lock on. A sudden wind on Middle Range Lake. A September sunset. Remember, George? A canoe that overturned. A girl who couldn't swim very well. Well, the least a person can do when he saves your life is to remember, wouldn't you think? Morgan? Morgan Matheson? Are you Morgan Matheson? I'm Morgan. Only last names change. Well, now, as I recall it, that Morgan girl was about the best horsewoman in Maine. 
Still with horses? Still. I hope she'll stay this time. She will, George. She will. Downing, New York, please. Thank you. Riverside Institute. Dr. Martin Herzberg, please. Tell him Mrs. Morgan Harper. No, no, wait. Um, he wouldn't know that. Um, Mrs. Morgan Mallory. Hello? Hello, doctor? Maine? Poland Spring, Maine? I'm surprised you remember. The last time we talked was long distance, too. That's right. I called you from Madrid. Eric's got away from me, hasn't he? No. No, I haven't seen him, but... He left a painting here where he'd be sure I'd... I'd find it. Isn't that encouraging? I, I mean... If he still wanted to kill me... Wouldn't he have just come here and stayed in the office? Well, so I wouldn't find the painting. Maybe, maybe he's better. Oh, no. His nurse? That calico don't please me none at all. All the time showed me the whites of his eyes. I don't think...
What's the matter? Just hold me. These woods can get spooky, especially around sunset. Engine or flat? Don't let me go, please. Well, if there's something out there that's frightening, why don't I go take a look? No, thank you, Link Case. Please. Out and in back. Take a couple of minutes to change that tire. Just keep on driving. Social director hiding? Uh, uh, no, I, uh, I'm scratching my back. I think I've picked up a summer rash. Hope it's not contagious. Especially. I haven't eaten a thing since I first met you. You can really lose weight when you're in love. You have such strong, beautiful hands. Kiss me. Love lobster. Until now, I've always believed that a person's first duty was to themselves, you know? A never-ending search for identity, a quest for self-knowledge. But I outgrew that nonsense the minute I saw you. I knew without words, without explanations, that a woman's prime responsibility is not to herself, but to a man. One man. The only man. Her first love. Her true love. Would you pass the butter, please? All right. Be evasive. I can appreciate your confusion. You look at me and you think, what can she have learned about anything in 16 short years? But people can learn in one instant. Experience is nothing but, but a swift flash of insight, if a person is tuned in. Now, what if each of my moments is equivalent to the average person's week? That'd make me ancient, wouldn't it? Actually, Binky, I find you irresistible. 
It's below your level, Todd. Condescending, teasing, that's not you. The fact is, I'm married. Mr. Spence, let me see your personnel record. How dare he? Scar tissue around the eyes. One eye... One eye is gone. He had an accident. A very bad accident. Well, he sure doesn't sound like a hard one to spot. I'm leaving Deputy Stone here in case he tries to make contact again. I guess I don't have to tell you. Stay close. Don't go off the hotel grounds until we get him. Stone? I'm gonna get cleaned up and have some dinner. I guess you're not very hungry, but uh, maybe you'd like some company. Top drawer of the filing cabinet, there's a bottle. Shot glasses should be there too. Keep it for company. Company? The world's full of company, Link Case. Young men who have time to offer. And nothing else. Strong young shoulders to cry on. On Corfu, Mallorca. In Sicily, the streets, the bars, the cafes, the ski slopes. They all have plenty of time. You can waste your life away. A weekend here, a month there. And never know what happened to it or to you. So I came back where I started. When I was a girl and I had nothing but time to give. One for the road? Do you want me to go quietly? Actually, I don't want you to go at all. There's nothing in the world I'd rather do than have dinner with you. But close the door on the way out. And don't ask me again. Just stay away from me. This one too, Mr. Spence. Besides that fire, you must shovel a quarter ton of coal in there. Why? Kids, maybe? Well, put one of your men in here. Keep him out of sight and see that he gets spelled. Around the clock, George. I want this room watched until we find out what this is all about. Very good, very good. Stop writing on the walls. Close off the bunk, put the iron away, straighten your blankets. Very good. Dismiss! Let's go! Get the ball. Aren't you even interested in why I'm here? Why? Since you insist, I'll tell you. No, I mean, why should I ask? Common courtesy. I've got a date with man's best friend. Mrs. Harper. A horse. Dogs are man's best friend, not horses. You can't ride a dog, you can ride a horse. You and I, good buddy, are gonna swap jobs. Oh? Well, you need the experience of meeting people. You need to broaden your horizons. You need to open up, old man. 
What is this? Inspecting a bunch of kids to see if they can make hospital corners on their cots, to make sure their socks and their sweatshirts are washed. There's no growth in a job like that. Binky's really bugging you, huh? Binky? What, what's Binky? Ask her. She's right behind you. Huh? You need to open up more, old man, and watch those horizons here. They tell me the road to the farm is impassable, so unless you want to ride along with us, you'll just have to take my word for it that there's nothing to worry about. We'll be back before dark. I've never been on a horse, Mrs. Harper. The least you can do is wait till I call the sheriff so he can shoot Andy over here to ride along with you. I've asked you to find Eric, not quarantine me. When I made the decision to come back home to Poland Spring, there were a great number of collateral decisions that went along with the main decision. One of them was that I would live my life, what's left of it, without being afraid. No more fear. Not fear of loneliness. Not even fear of myself. Another was to restore the farm my family had for 136 years. I'm going to ride up there, look that farm over, and see what's needed. Then start getting it done. Not tomorrow. Not next month. But right now. Anyway, Leo will be with me. Tell her to get down off that horse and stay put till we color this maniac. Andy's down in Portland. But I can't ride, Sheriff. Yes, sir, right away, sir. You do that pretty well. You're talking to a Texan, sir. Can you saddle another one? Another time. If I don't hurry, I'll lose them. I know where they're going. Very impressive. All you need is a cape billowing behind you. I never travel without one. I thought I made myself fairly clear last night. You know, uh, I remember when I was six, there was a closet in the back bedroom of our house. Well, one night when nobody was home, the moment came when I had to face the monster I knew was in that closet. So I went in the room and stood in front of the door for 10 minutes until I got up enough courage to open it. And there it was. The biggest, most horrible looking monster that ever existed. I sit there petrified and alone. I wanted to yell and I couldn't make a sound. Last night, uh, you looked how I felt that night when I was six years old. Don't you understand? I don't want to need anyone.
with their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Care to sign our guest book? Yeah, paintings in that room on the third floor. Oh, you've been here before. Yes, some of them are quite lovely, aren't they? But most people don't want to take the trouble to climb the stairs. 1943, one August afternoon, I came out of that door. Just as she came in from the outside. That sounds most romantic. What happened? We lived happily ever after. Oh, then this is a second honeymoon you're coming back. I hardly know you. Who knows anybody? I mean, what do you dream about? What do you hope for? Well, if I get 10% of it, I'm ahead of the game. Any special girl? No special girl. What if you never got that 10%? Some people don't. I'd be one of them. I... I... I'm trying to get up enough courage to ask you to 
able to do something that could end all your dreams. I've got to find Eric, talk to him, before he kills somebody else. Or before he gets killed himself. I went to see the sheriff today. Give me one of your young men, I asked him. Let him go with me while I look for Eric. He got very angry. He told me to stay put in my stable. My stakeouts, my roadblocks will trap Eric, he said. But he doesn't know him. He doesn't know how sensitive he is, how perceptive. I'm not sending anyone out to play games with your maniac. That's what he told me. None of my boys is a pigeon, Mrs. Harper. Is there no limit to guilt? Guess not. Else, why would I ask you to help me, Lynn Case? Why would I say to you, please? Do another good deed all day, will you, you little charmer? Now, would you get me some more coffee? If it won't cut into playtime too much? Here's a 40 I owe you. Oh, I thank you. And Binky thanks you. Now we can get that magnificent set of sterling we've always wanted. Extra set of car keys, bank book, and a letter to my mother. But don't mail it unless you have to. Well, the only thing you've forgotten is a last will and testament, like, uh, what do I do with your ranger jump boots? Uh, where do you think you're going? With Morgan to find Eric. With Morgan to find Eric. Why? Because she asked me. I remember I had butterflies that night. It was my first time on stage. Eric sat up there in the balcony. The, the lights were so bright that I couldn't see him sitting up there painting me. When the performance was over, he came down 
Then, as we were still taking curtain calls, he handed me the painting. I remember thinking, am I that beautiful? And suddenly Eric said, you are to me. Just as though he could read my thoughts. The play closed after Labor Day. Eric and I were married in October. Say that again. I'm not leaving. I'm not ever leaving. I want you to know, Vicky, that for 16 years I have cherished and adored you. I have lavished upon you the essence of all my scholarship, the distilled learning of centuries of Judeo-Christian philosophy, the psychic revelations of Freud, the revisionism of subsequent schools of human behaviorism. I have done this, I earnestly believe, not out of parental guilt, but out of my love for you. And I now, with that same love, tell you to get into this car and knock off this nonsense, or I shall, in plain sight of everyone, take you over my knee and wail the living daylights out of you. <laughs> it's a count of three, Binky, then no mercy. One, two... Todd! Three... Oh. oh, Todd, I knew you wouldn't let me go. Oh, Binky, knock off the tears. I have a problem with a friend of mine who's in real trouble. I have a list. These are things I absolutely hate to do. I also know they happen to be things you love to do. Water skiing. I have water on the knee, same problem in the snow. Horseback riding, a slip disc, tennis, tennis elbow, golf, weak wrist. Dancing, uh, two left feet. Moonlight and flowers just put me to sleep. Face it, Binky, it'll never work. I'll never marry anyone but you. Goodbye, Binky. This is the purest water in the world. Our love, he said, is pure, like this water, eternal. We went to New York, and I began to see how different he was from other men. He was preoccupied, trying to isolate one single theme and paint it. His theme was love, and I was his model. He saw everything through me, but with me alone, he couldn't capture what he wanted. He brought in young men to pose with me. Made them hold me, kiss me while he painted. There was, there was this one young man. With him and with me, Eric began to paint his masterwork. The colors of love, he called it. No wonder. Eric found out. For an hour, 
He didn't say a word while I cried and asked for forgiveness. Then quite calmly, he walked over to the drapes and set fire to them with his lighter. One by one, he started throwing his paintings into the flames. I tried to run out, but he forced me back into the studio. I got out through the skylight. A panel of glass fell on his face. I don't blame you for that, Morgan. I paint better with one eye. How's the old saying? How blue the day is to the eye that's been blinded. Eric, let him go. I'll come with you. Do you love him? I love you. We'll take your car. shoulders, blue eyes, and a soft head. He's traveling with a woman, one of those handsome mid-40 jobs in a caddy convertible. Does that ring any bells? No. see it was Larson in the bin there with his head all caved in and over in the corner is this guy with a shotgun busy painting and he's got Morgan and the case kid backed up against the furnace Betty get the sheriff on the line yes, sir. Close to the furnace, please. I want the uh, pattern of the flame as a background, yes. Yes, yes, that's it, yes. Now, now, uh, now, now, put your arms around her, please. your feelings show. Yes. Yes. Uh, darling, when I finish this, how would you like to go to Kashmir? We'll rent a houseboat. You know, lotus grow in the water and menstruals pass by. On. What, what are they... What do they call those little boats uh, that they propel around the lakes? It, uh, or, it, it starts with a D, doesn't it? I'm sorry, Eric. I don't know. Yes, well, 
Maybe we'll find it there, on the surface of their lake, in the substance of their moon, the reflection of love. And I shall pin it to canvas and make it last forever in paint. Would you like that? Yes, darling. It sounds wonderful. I've missed you terribly, Morgan. I waited all week to paint you. And why did you go out and not tell me? Darling, I only went to the store. I bought the raisin bread you like so much. never come to Maine, we might never have met. If you hadn't been an artist, if you'd been anything else, we might have met and had a life of love and some significance. If I hadn't been so lonely and weak. I might not have destroyed you. Gems presentation. Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.